Today we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. The last major regime strongholds have fallen. Uh, the world is a better place with Gaddafi gone. A recent video of Ugandan President Museveni explaining how NATO assassinated Muammar Gaddafi, one of the greatest advocates of Pan-Africanism at the Pan-African Parliament in 2014 has surfaced. His speech has sparked outrage among Africans because it clearly showed that the West and its allies do not care about the African people and will remove anyone who stands in their way. Now, when this problem of Libya started, the African Union, with our chairman, who is here now, this gentleman here, they formed a committee, a committee of a few of us, I think we were six. I was one of them. The whole of the African Union gave that committee the mandate to look for a solution for the Libyan problem. Now, on one occasion, I didn't go that time. These excellencies, this one here, Jacob Zuma, and the others, I, I was not there, but my, my minister was among them. They entered a play in workshop in his place. They were going to Libya to mediate. And they were told by NATO to go back. Yes. He said, you go back. Yes, he's here. If I'm telling you lies. I'm not the one who invited him. You're the one who invited him. African presidents on an African mission over African soil we are ordered by NATO to go back. That NATO has not allowed them to land in Libya. In his speech, President Musveni stated in his speech that they didn't listen to us, they continued and killed Gaddafi, and now Libya is in shambles up to today. If NATO's involvement was actually launched on humanitarian grounds, as they claimed, the situation in Libya would be different today. But thanks to the 2016 publication of Hillary Clinton's emails, we now know the true motive for NATO's entry into Libya. It was merely to prevent the formation of an independent hard currency in Africa, which would liberate the continent from its economic shackles under the dollar, the IMF, and the French African franc. That hard currency would have helped Africa to break free from the remaining vestiges of colonial exploitation. The U.S. NATO intervention was supposedly launched on humanitarian grounds in response to reports of mass atrocities under Gaddafi. However, years later, various human rights organizations have questioned the claims due to a lack of evidence. Prior to 2011, Libya had attained economic independence, with its own water, food, oil, currency, and state-owned bank. Under Gaddafi, it rose from one of Africa's poorest to its richest. Education and medical care were both free. Having a home was seen as a human right, and Libyans took part in an innovative system of local democracy. The country had the world's largest irrigation system, the Great Man-Made River Project, which supplied water from the desert to cities in coastal areas, and Gaddafi was planning to replicate this model throughout Africa. But that was before U.S. NATO forces attacked the irrigation infrastructure and wreaked havoc on the country. Why would the irrigation system be bombed if the involvement was truly humanitarian? A civilian irrigation system serving up to 70% of the population is hardly a humanitarian intervention. One of the emails read in part from Hillary Clinton's private email server stated that Gaddafi's government holds 143 tons of gold and a similar amount in silver. This gold was accumulated prior to the current rebellion and was intended to be used to establish a pan-African currency based on the Libyan gold dinar. 
This plan was designed to provide the Francophone African countries with an alternative to the French franc, CFA. In a source comment, the original declassified email added, According to knowledgeable individuals, this quantity of gold and silver is valued at more than $7 billion. French intelligence officers discovered this plan shortly after the current rebellion began, and this was one of the factors that influenced President Nicolas Sarkozy's decision to commit France to the attack on Libya. According to these individuals, Sarkozy's plans are driven by the following issues. 1. A desire to gain a greater share of Libya oil production. 2. Increase French influence in North Africa. 3. Improve his internal political situation in France. 4. Provide the French military with an opportunity to reassert its position in the world. And 5. Address the concern of his advisors over Gaddafi's long-term plans to supplant France as the dominant power in Francophone Africa. Conspicuously absent is any mention of humanitarian concerns. The objectives, therefore, are money, power, and oil. Robert Perry, an investigative journalist, highlighted further explosive confirmations. They included admissions of rebel war crimes, special operations trainers inside Libya almost from the outset of the uprisings, and al-Qaeda infiltrated in the U.S.-backed resistance. This basically suggests that the West organized the protests in Libya at the time. In 2011, French President Nicolas Sarkozy purportedly described Libya's leader as a threat to global financial security. But how could a tiny country of 6 million people represent such a threat just because Gaddafi wants to establish an independent African currency in, the words of Canadian professor Maximilian Fort, put it in his heavily researched book, Slouching Toward Cert, NATO's war on Libya and Africa. The goal of U.S. military intervention was to disrupt an emerging pattern of independence and a network of collaboration within Africa that would facilitate increased African self-reliance. This is at odds with the geostrategic and political economic ambitions of extracontinental European powers, namely the U.S. All of this suggests that the West wants a perpetually dependent Africa, where they will continue to siphon off her resources in the name of helping the continent, and anyone who stands in their way, such as Gaddafi, will be labeled a terrorist, a dictator, and eventually eliminated. What do you think? Leave your comment down below in the comment box. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and put on the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this.